from the testament of Micah Foxglove. My grandfather taught me that when the storm is raging on the horizon, I should always look to it so I know which way the wind will blow, how hard the rain will fall, where the lightning will strike. He told me not to avert my eyes. So although we were told to keep away, I went to witness the executions. The sights and the sounds and the, the scents were as you would expect. I won't speak of it any further, but... Afterwards? Afterwards, in the stillness? I realized something was wrong. I mean, something else was wrong. A lot was wrong already, but something was wrong with me. Everywhere I looked, I saw things that did not belong. Things from the other side. I heard things. Spirits and, and ghosts. Flits of memories. After images of what had gone before. And even now, the creaking of the ropes echoes in my ears. I do not mean that figuratively. It is all very real and immediate. I look around at all of you. My friends. My family. My pack. I see you, each with your own souls draped across your shoulders like dead skins. They drift and they wave and they twitch. They twitch when you move. You asked me if this was not perhaps a blessing as well as a curse. I promise you it is not. I have taken part in the rituals that let us glimpse the other side. This is nothing like that. There is no control. No differentiation. The world speaks with two voices and it is overwhelming and so difficult. So difficult to focus on what I can touch with my hands when the, the fleeting shadows constantly brush against my fingertips, demanding that I call them by name. When I cannot tell a blooming flower from the memory of a blooming flower. From the story of a blooming flower, from the wish for a blooming flower, when I am watched from all sides by bright yellow eyes. <sighs> I'm sorry. It has been difficult to adapt, but I will try to be clear and lucid for the sake of the mood. I don't... I don't want to panic anyone. But we need to understand that things are not the same as they were. Our world is damaged. Things are seeping through. I sit up at night and I hear them jostling around, looking for the gaps and the fissures and the little tunnels that would let them slip into the sunlight and move among us. I think that's uh, the whole of my statement. I think that's everything I can convey. I will do my best to answer any other questions you all have, but first I... First I need to ask if anyone else can see all of these cats. Welcome to the Chimera, a role-playing adventure podcast. This week, we're returning to our game of the Deep Forest in preparation for the start of Season 3 and drawing the first cards of spring. You know, metaphorical spring that lasts like 84 years. We're not playing this game right, but we already talked about that. Uh, but before we get started, I'd like to take a moment to thank Griffin Coldiron for performing this week's intro for us. You might know Griffin as Mordecai, the boisterous barbarian druid from the 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons podcast Another Path, or as one of the proprietors of Zack and Griffin's Multiversal Pet Shop, both of which you can find under the umbrella of Ghost Light Media, that's GLM Pods, on Twitter. And now, spring is upon us, so I will say to you all, Hello! All right, we have um, placed locations on our map. We've we've uh, both created various monsters and factions. Again, not an exhaustive list, but these are the major ones we're dealing with, at least for now. Others may enter the, the process at some point or another. And also the remnants um, 
the official designation for them. One of which has been a, has been adopted by the um, community and the reindeer, which are taboo. Uh, we're being joined by Ethan, a new player has joined the party. Hello, Woo-hoo! welcome, Yay. Hello, Ethan. Uh, y'all have actually heard Ethan's voice before because he recorded the uh, the sung version of the prophecy of the Scarlet Brotherhood. That's true. Did a great that job. was me. Because Ethan has a talent. <laughs> <laughs> I can juggle. <laughs> no, I great can't. For actually. Podcasting. I really can't juggle. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can't juggle, Ethan. Nope. Uh, <laughs> man of many talents, but that ain't one. Uh, and uh, Ethan is, has uh, also placed uh, one more item, one more remnant on the map, which is sort of automatically taboo. You want to read us in on that, Ethan? Yeah, so uh, the cistern of, uh oh, what'd you call them? Of the bitter well. Of the bitter well. I should get to know that. The cistern of the bitter well, um, as I as Kelly mentioned, uh, had a schism after the trials. Uh, three of them stayed. Three of them left. There were six of them. Uh, two of them were cohabitating, and uh, another one. Uh, those are the ones that left. And so uh, the entry is that there is two abandoned witch cottages um, on the western end of Salem on the shores of Spring Pond. Cool. So that's on our map now. We should probably just do a quick maybe rundown of all the stuff we added. Oh, just to go back over what's on the map? Yeah. So maybe Mm -hmm. start with the remnants since we just did one of those. Sure. So the other remnants are, uh, oh, here, I've got a list in the slack. Hello, Slack will let me scroll back. May not. Yeah, Slack's yeah. been very sluggish for me recently when they have stuff running. I mean, would you say it's been a little slack? No, I wouldn't. No. I would. I would say it's been a little slack. <laughs> Remnants, Gallows Hill, source of ghost activity, taboo. The Wild Hunt, once every 20 years or so, taboo. I'm calling it the vision spot in Salem Sound uh, between Salem and Marblehead towards the Salem side. Adopted. Do you have a different name for that, Vin, or do you like that? Uh, no, I don't think I don't think anyone has a name for it. Okay. I think it's sort of like spoken around. Gotcha. Uh, a locus, a grove beside a creek, um, appeared after the last execution of the trials. Taboo. Eerie fog of whispers and strange shadows on Wenham Lake. Taboo. And now this empty witch hut. Taboo. In terms of the factions, again, we have a younger pack of werewolves with southern hunting grounds. The Nesbits, Nesbits, a mummy cult in Marblehead that does not currently have a mummy with it. Mr. Chamberlain, a reclusive vampire up in Rowley. Uh, Some sort of siren-like fairy on Big Misery Island. And the Cistern of the Bitter Well. I noted them as a broken circle, just meaning like they were a coven and it's at least partially disbanded, right? There's like a group that split. Correct. Yes. Okay. Anything else we want to note? Go over, review, identify. Okay. Nope. I think that all makes sense. So as a reminder for our process here, we draw a card. We do what the card says. And you get one action in addition to that. So when it's your turn... You have a choice. Each card has like it's a it's a this or that. Some of them will probably require a little bit of reinterpretation for our specific context. We're going to sort of do that together. But the person whose card it is is going to make a final final adjudication about how to interpret the card within our you know slight twisting and bending of the rules. Um, yeah, do we have feel like we have a handle on that. I know you listened to last game, Ethan, so you're at least as up to date as yep. as we are on that. Uh, so I'll just. Okay. Yep, go ahead. Sorry, can you just briefly explain the difference between what taboo means and what adopted means? Sure. So, uh, I mean, that those are all, all these words are at least a little bit flexible, but uh, adopted means like this is a, this is a location or a thing that is important to the community. So like in the case of this mystery spot, this like vision location in the water, we said this is sort of like neutral territory. Everybody has access to it. You know, you might be in a fight with each other, but you don't like camp out by this place and punish people for trying to make use of it. It's considered like everybody's a, like a, like a public resource. Right. Got it. And it's our thing. It's part of our, yeah, community. it's something right. that marks the community. 
Um, whereas the other, the taboos mean that it's a place that's associated with fear or mistrust. Doesn't mean that nobody necessarily ever goes there or you can't have any involvement with it, but it's like it's, 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 uh, there's a general distaste for it. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a collective understanding that it's not kind of in bounds, even if an individual might transgress that taboo. Okay. That explains it. Uh, and again, the moves on your turn, the actions are uncover something old, agree on something, start a project. So who wants to go first? Any volunteers? Uh, what's the order that everyone has on their layers? Is it me, Casey, Jeff, Ethan, Kelly, Braden? Yeah. Yes. Oh, should we just go in that order? That seems easiest. We should probably go yeah. in that order because otherwise we're going to get hell of confused. Yep. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great random way to do it. So, Vin, the first card is yours. All right. Here we go. We got a... Nine of hearts. Nine of hearts. Nine of hearts. Okay, so I will look at the oracle and read you what nine of hearts is. The nine of hearts, per the oracle, one of you is still recovering from serious wounds inflicted by the humans. Who? What are the nature of these wounds? Or, two of the community's smallest members get into a fight. What provoked them? Are either seriously hurt? I think that one of the werewolves mm -hmm. was watching sort of w watching the aftermath of the last of the executions from you know a nearby position and this is sort of again in the the gallows hill area obviously because that's what it's named after and for a second was sort of knocked half into the umbra, mm. you know, the, the spirit plane. And his mind never is, is still a little bit in there. Ooh. He's sort of seeing two realities at once and he is not handling it well. Okay. Kelly, is this each card represents seven years, correct? So yes, with some understanding that it's going to be a little bit loose, like we're, I'm not, I, I didn't institute that to to try and straight jacket people, mm -hmm. but to give a sense of like time progressing and especially like once we once we get further into it, a sense of like now we're in the revolutionary period. Now sure. we're in you know approaching industrialization, right? Like some ability to cue into real things going on in the real world or the regular but world. But at some point you're gonna indicate to us uh, how time is moving based on the cards. Like, yeah, it, it, yeah seven, okay. seven, seven years is a general. I yeah. think the season changes okay. will probably be like the big hard points mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think within that, everything's pretty flexible. Okay. Oh, so now I get an action. Uh, yes. All right. I'm going to discover something old, um, which is that the remaining witches, seeing that a lot of things are sort of in flux, confer with the reclusive vampire, Mr. Chamberlain, and they decide that they're going to reach out to the old world for some additional expertise. Mm -hmm. And so a few months later, a coterie of vampires arrives, mostly uh, thaumaturgists, probably maybe five, maybe like three thaumaturgists and a couple of like, you know, managerial types to start looking into things and figuring out exactly how bad the situation is mm -hmm. or how unstable from a thaumaturgical perspective. And they're going to camp out or rather they're probably going to establish a zoom in. Let me set a drawing tool headquarters right over here going to draw a droplet of blood that's what that is <laughs> inside a little square okay in the mm -hmm. north fields uh so that actually sounds to me like it's kind of two things it sounds to me like discover something old and start a project right because they're here to like render some sort of assessment well I, i'd say i mean just based on the game structure it's not officially a project yet mm -hmm. okay um yeah i so think you're the only one who's actually played this game before so. yeah um, so that is a discover something old because I'm sort of putting them on the map. Yeah, definitely. 
we will see whether they manage to start a project or whether anything happens in between or what mm -hmm. uh, on uh, following turns. Cool. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Casey, yep. you ready for your card? Sure, let's do it. All right. Five of hearts. Heart. Okay. Two or more of the monsters who live here decide to commit themselves to each other. Who performs the rituals for the union? Or a younger monster is brought to adulthood through an ancient ceremony. Who performs the rites required for the transition? Uh, one or both of these might require a little bit of uh, interpretation, but mm -hmm. I, I think they're, they don't seem completely implausible given what's on the table. Sure. Um, let's see. So I'm going to say that one of the um, Nesbitt cult mm -hmm. um, has been kind of intrigued by slash helping this young werewolf that was is sort of half in the umbra or his mentality is half in the umbra because mm -hmm. there's, you know, this sense that they're seeing beyond this present life. And I think that sort of ties in a little bit to this, you know, this void that's missing for, for this group that's sort of in search of a eternal being that they haven't been able to devote themselves to yet. So they've sort of been spending some time together. Um, and uh, I don't know how thrilled um, either the werewolves or the Nesbits are about this because, uh, you know, it's, it's, there's not usually much intermingling, um, but uh, they have decided that they're going to essentially kind of branch off and, um, if you talk with the one werewolf, it's, you know, they, they want to start their own pack. If you talk with the one Nesbitt, they're sort of going to create a, a sort of, uh, you know, offshoot of the cult. But um, they have decided to kind of do their own thing together. Um, and so they end up picking a place that's um, up in Salem town. So it's, it's kind of, um, it's going to be off the, this little, uh, what do you, what would you call this? This little jut here, I'll mark it, um, kind of like right up here, which makes them kind of between the two. Okay. Um, that's out on the neck. Yeah. Yes. So neck. they, they are kind of setting up and, and deciding to you know, start a life together out on the neck. Okay. And I have drawn a red no symbol circle the slash through it to indicate what is it? Consternation? No. What's it called? Oh, contempt. 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 Excellent. Our nice. first contempt token. The Nesbits, oh, as a whole, are not happy about this. I think. Mm -hmm. uh, they probably know werewolves exist, and they consider them bone pickers, carrion feeders, specifically things that eat dead people. And that is not okay with them. It sounds like actually we should put contempt on both sides, right? Because the idea is that neither faction approves of this. Well, it's not. Uh, contempt is not like faction specific. It's just oh, okay. each player can put a contempt if they think that some contempt is warranted by a thing that happens. Mm -hmm. um, and mm. it may represent the community. It may represent just like a feeling that, oh, this is going to be bad in the long run, even if the community doesn't immediately think it's bad. Okay, cool. Good. Thanks for the explainer. So theoretically, we could all decide that we have contempt about that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't feel particularly contemptuous of it, but it does make a lot of sense that someone puts in on behalf of the Nesbits. Contempt. Okay, cool. And uh, okay. what's your action, Casey? And then I can either introduce... Uh, discover something old, uh, agree on something. What's the third one? Start, Start a, project. a project. Start a project. Um, so I'm going to say, um, um, I'm going to say that there has been um, some attempt to make the vision spot kind of more accessible. So we're not just kind of going out and bobbing in rowboats. So there's been some interest in basically building a bridge from the one point on the mainland over towards the um, piece of land that's jutting out where the Nesbits are sort of located um, that will happen to sort of pass over this area. So it becomes a, an easier way to, um, to be accessed. It's like mm -hmm. from the neck to Marblehead. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, so who's undertaking that? Um, 
They can't just be the community. Okay, it's just the well, community. I don't know. If, yeah. yeah, I don't know how much there there's an established community yet. It's sort of right because we sort of have these these factions that are all coexisting together. But yeah. um, but it can be a general agreed upon project. Yeah, I kind of feel like the the witches might be spearheading this one because um, mm-hmm. they seem to be the ones looking most for you know guidance and. Um, and just having like easier access. And I feel like the thaumaturgist would probably also be on board. With that as sort of a collaboration. If that makes sense mm-hmm. to you. Mm-hmm. Do all of these yeah. actions have to be performed by, for the lack of a better term, monsters? Can they be performed by mortals by our turns or no? Do you think it makes most sense to structure as a project that's actually being undertaken by the, the mortal community? I'm open to the idea of it. So maybe slightly outside the bounds of the original rules, but mm-hmm. I don't think it's a bad idea. All right. Hmm. Right. Yeah. The original game assumes that the humans are all gone. Right. Hmm. It can also be the monsters community working through a mortal For group. Sure. That's right. like very yeah. established in the world of darkness concept. I mean, that's a very pa- practical public works project. So it's definitely not something that would yeah. occur in Massachusetts. So <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, Casey, since you suggested it, are you sure it wouldn't be a ferry service? Oh, 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 oh my God. That was so good. Uh, that was really good. Right. Boot from call. <laughs> we'll, we'll come back to that. <laughs> uh, so how many steps do you think that project is? Because each project can be up to, I think, six steps. Yep. One to six. Um, so we'd have the, the planning. Um, it, it's more a measure of length than like. Oh, how many ticks? Well, how long? So, like, is it seven? Is it many? less than seven years or more than seven years? I think is, and I, I'm again just using that as a general figure. I right? would, I would guess less than seven, but probably close to seven. Like, I could see it being like a two-step, just because it's a like it's a big bridge, isn't it? It's a big bridge yeah. for the time period, especially. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. that's kind of a huge project. And is this a mundane bridge or is this uh, something that is only accessible by a bridge that was built in the Umbra? Yeah. Oh, that would be interesting because that would probably require the help of this, the werewolf that's a little bit ostracized Mm. potentially. Well, maybe not, but I think that would be interesting. Yeah. And the Umbral bridge would, would be, um, it would remove any questions about like, what are the practical concerns about shipping? Mm-hmm. Right. So part, of, part of the reason why Salem flourishes as a town is that it becomes a really important shipping hub. And yeah, that's that... part of the reason why the bridges suck. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that could be an okay. even longer well, project as it has to be like conditioned mm-hmm. into that space. Unless it's Umbra. Yeah, but I mean like building in the Umbra is I think not necessarily something that that any of us can just like do as a casual thing and we certainly can't use human labor for it sure yeah it can essentially take however much time you think it's interesting for it to take right because the method is is supernatural and mm-hmm. there can be all kinds you can you you're writing the story of it so you can write in as many problems as you want like you you essentially decide if i understand this correctly you decide mm-hmm. how easy or how hard this is yeah and the thing okay. to bear in mind is that there are cards that can cause complications to a project. They can cause it to fail. They can cause it to stall for a little while. They can cause it to complete automatically. Mm -hmm. So a project that has more steps has more opportunities to come into some kind of complication. I like seven years. It seems like an auspicious number. And it seems like sort of an appropriate number for a mystical bridge. So that'll be one step, basically. Yeah. Okay. So that'll complete at the end of the next turn, I believe. Yeah, I mean, when, yes, let's there's say a, the end. There's a specific order. Like an order rules. in which things resolve. Uh, I just always forget where it is. Um, okay, the following things happen. Card, project, dice, action. So it happens okay. in the middle of the next turn. Cool. Okay, yes, after the after the next player resolves their card. Okay. Yeah, so there's an opportunity for the card to screw it up, but it completes before you take your next action. And that next player is Jeff. Hello. All right. And your card, sir, is the Queen of Hearts. Queen of Hearts. That sounds good. Yeah. She made some tarts, as I recall. 
The Queen of Hearts, some of the monsters here have traveled a great distance to join the community. What drew them here? Where did they leave? Or, all of the monsters here have lived in this region for centuries. What originally drew them to this area? What do you think, Jeff? Those are all good questions. Um, um, all of the monsters here have lived in this region for a century. And that seems um, to be slightly uh, contradicted by the text so far. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, a little bit. And, and we know some things about, like, at least some of these folks are, are people who immigrate. Maybe not all of them, but at least some of them are, are people who immigrated with the um, the white settlers. And that has certain historical parameters to it. But I think if we boil this down, the question, the, the opportunities are creating one shared reason for why people are here, right? That's what the right-hand choice is. Or the left-hand choice is establishing one, spe- one reason very specific to a given group about why they're here now. Right. Um, a given group. And it can be I, any group. Right. No, I'm trying to think of an interesting group to talk about. Like, I want to pick on the Nesbits. Maybe um, the vampires have an ulterior motive for coming here other than just being summoned. <laughs> yeah, they are the newest arrivals. Yeah, they are or the you could give arrivals. Mr. Chamberlain a backstory. That's also true. Hmm. He doesn't he doesn't have a, a backstory. Or the siren for that matter. Or the, or the siren, yeah. Um Mr. Chamberlain. Or the siren. Or the Nesbits. I really like the Nesbits because I feel like they're the ones that are the weirdest for this area. Um uh Obviously, they have traveled a great distance to join the community. What drew them here? Do we know what drew them here? No. We just know they're here, right? Braden? Just uh, immigration. They've just blended in with the rest of the Europeans who settled here. Yeah. So, and they don't have their mummy yet. So, the Nesbits heard of a land across the sea that like it was sort of an El Dorado kind of story Mm -hmm. um, with great big golden pyramids and stories of uh, sort of the like Ra having um, Mm re-risen. And so the cult follows those stories to this area and are searching because for whatever reason, the mysteries involved uh, indicate that this specific area is the location of that, that mystical city or the story of that mystical city. Um, And Hmm. they have been finding uh, evidence that there may be truth or some truth to that story in this area. So that's the Nesbits. That's why they're here. Cool. There is a, uh, so the the ancient civilization of Irem has a slightly different mythology, but they do have kind of an Osiris, whom they call Azar, who is sort of the king of the gods who died and was brought back to life through necromancy. Okay. Yes, but also this is just a random ass cult. So the idea that they have all the, like that they know as much about Irem as an actual mummy does yeah. is, is not guaranteed. So yeah. I think that. There's plenty of space for them to. There's plenty of space for them to be dumb. I guess is my point. <laughs> <laughs> you mean like looking for a sun god in New England? <laughs> yeah. Hey, there's some truth to those rumors. It's better than looking in Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> Marginally. And the Umbral Bridge completes. The Umbral Bridge completes. So, Casey, since your project completed, what does the Umbral Bridge look like? What, how does that situation uh, play out? So, well, I've, you know, it doesn't look like anything in the uh, regular world. You just sort of have to know where it is. Um, there's probably a couple of markers there, but you have to know how to find those too. So it's very sort of hidden in plain sight. In the Umbra, um, Kelly, can you kind of, like, I never get a good sense of like what, what the umbra as a whole kind of like what its vibe is like when you're in there are you does it feel like you're in another place is it like something sort of overlaid over the space that you're already in like i 
Do you know what it looks like when uh, uh, when uh, not Bilbo Baggins, the other Baggins? Frodo. Frodo. When Frodo puts on the ring. Mm. Lotho. Yeah. Lobelia. Stop listing Bagginses. <laughs> <laughs> Never. But like, think about like in in the in the Peter Jackson movies, like when he puts on the ring, like it's sort of like he's in the same space, but it looks really it's all these shadows around. Everything is like, I don't know, kind of threateningly. All the lines are kind of threateningly vibrating, right? Okay. Um, there's kind of like this rushing in the ears. That's how I picture it. I'm not. You don't have to necessarily picture it the same way I do, but like the colors get get weird. Not necessarily duller, not necessarily more vibrant, but like change. Um, actually, mm-hmm. the the type of the umber that it is probably matters a lot. Is it an umber that's aspected to dreams because it's sort of more fairy charged? An umber right. that's aspected to sort of the primal wilderness because it's more like like uh, Pangea, like the sort of ancient lands. More mm-hmm. death focused would probably be the most like the the Frodo image, right? Um, but it's like um, hyper real distortion of the the conventional world. Okay. Well, I'm going to go with more fairy charged because that works for me. Mm-hmm. We'll say that corner of the umbra is a little bit um, richer in, you know, dreams and, and whatever sort of powers the fairies, um, which is why part of why the siren kind of set up house not too far from there. So it's not like it's, it's sort of this bridge that um, is more made of light than like cobbled together like actual stones. Uh, but it's kind of, so you're in this space and everything sort of looks hyper-realistic and superimposed and it's it's less deathy and pointy and a little bit more um, kind of just blurred. Like, uh, you know, like like when, when everything's a little bit out of focus or if you take your glasses off, um, it's that sort of sense. But um, the bridge itself is very sharply defined. Like it's the one clear thing that you can see because it belongs in this space and it's not really sharing the space in the, in the other realm. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's sort of, um, it's sort of like a pale blue, um, kind of just a, like, if you look like it doesn't seem to have any thickness or depth, but you, when you step on it, you can walk across it. Do you need to do anything special to be able to? walk across it like uh, I think you need, you need to something? be in the umbra to do it mm. so you you have to be able to get there and if you can at this point anyway the assumption is like you're some part of the the community of monsters and all that's all you really need to be to get access to the to the um division spot so there's no other like barriers or anything mm. cool uh now jeff gets his action Yep. Okay. Um, so I think I'm going to do discover something old or uncover something old. And I'm going to say that the completion of the umbral bridge, um, uh, I'd like, I'm going to say that the umbra or the gauntlet, I guess, was already weakened by the witch trials and the, the results of that. Um, and I'm going to say that the completion of the umbral bridge uh, finally tears cracks into the gauntlet where it was weakened um, and creates kind of a uh, like a outflux of spiritual activity as the boundary between the umbra and uh And the real world has sort of collapsed in sort of this area around Gallows Hill. I'm going to say it's pretty sizable. Awesome. I am drawing a contempt token. Mm -hmm. Is is the gauntlet just sort of the term for like the path between or like the barrier? It's the barrier between the regular world and the Umbra. There's probably like six terms for it. Yeah, but yeah, this is one of the many terms for it. Okay. The veil, the et cetera, et cetera. Same, same deal. For Got you, it. it would be the hedge, right? Right. That, yeah. If you want to, that would be using the the um, second the, the end wad yeah. changeling term, wad fairy term, wad changeling term. Yeah. yeah. Yep. We'll settle on all okay. those eventually. Not nuts about that term, but if you like it, run with it. Uh, mm-hmm. So 
is, is there anything anything more specific about like about what this outflux does you want to establish Jeff, you don't have to like um your I, level I, of detail I, is perfect if you want to leave it there but if you wanted to be more specific i just want to know my wad lore is not the best but um i picture this as being like spirits being able to take advantage of that weakness and terrorize humans that are around there or mm -hmm. take advantage or you know eat fear or whatever it is any given spirit does but um it's not a good thing it's an opportunity for miscreants yes mm -hmm. okay so basically it's like a weak point and some spirits can get through and make mischief right cool ethan so mr ethan your card is a seven of hearts Ooh. There's a large body of water on the map. Where is it? What does it look like? <laughs> There's a place on the map that has been desecrated. Where is it? How might it be restored? I'll say if you want to if you want to use an existing body of water on the map, you could establish something new about it. Sure. Um, oh well, actually, or you could you could establish a, a, a body of water that exists only in the Umbra. Yeah. Would be another option. Um, I'm sorry. Just want to clarify: yeah. Have we moved? How far have we moved forward in time? Where are we around? Sorry. Gonna... So, it, it, you know, again, we're, we're playing a little loose, mm -hmm. but, you know, I do have a timeline here. So roughly 1714. Okay. Okay. And just so everybody knows this season, right? It's season is uh, 13 turns. It's going to end right around the Revolutionary War. That's sort of what just time wise. That's about where we're going to hit. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm sorry. One with the body of water or a desecrated place. Yeah, or a place that's been desecrated, including how it might be restored. So I'm going to say that the Cistron who stayed are starting to feel that their homes, the non-vacant ones, are starting to decay. In, in a, they're starting to become defiled, and they're not entirely sure why. They are also near the western portion of Salem, um, a little further north, we'll say. And so those homes are being, are are somehow being, becoming less inhabitable, and they don't know why. They just feel that they have to stay away from their own homes. Mm. And so they're finding themselves walking around looking for new uh, places and... How it might be restored is they have to find, they have to discern and come to terms with whether the, the severing of their, their sisterhood was necessary or warranted. So in other words, they have to come up with uh, either a way to reform their, their full coven or have to reforge a new coven. And that is how they're going to be able to re-inhabit their old homes. So if you'd like me to, I'll just quickly just mark their homes here. There. So now, now you can take an action. So as a reminder, you can uncover mm -hmm. something old, mm -hmm. which can be, you know, the literal uncovering of something old, or it can be like something coming to the community. Uh, sure. You can agree on something, which is um, essentially you make a statement about something in the community, a direction you want to go, a thing you want to address. And then the rest of us will have to either assent or uh, actively not assent. Uh, or you can start a project. Actively, no. So um, agreeing on something um, because their homes are currently defiled and they, they cannot be there um, while they're still figuring out how their coven functions, mm -hmm. they um, have made an, a, a, an agreement with the, uh, let's say, the werewolves. That well, actually, it's a little bit more mm -hmm. prescribed than that. Okay, it's like one faction that you'd speak on behalf of, so the sister in this case, or an individual, even or an individual states a position, mm -hmm. oh, and then okay. we each pick one of the other factions to go around and, and say whether we agree with it or whether we 
withhold from the agreement. Is that okay? Fair, Vin? That, yeah, yeah. That reflect. Yeah. In in the original game, this is called uh, hold a discussion. Sure. So this is mm-hmm. like a place where people are in character more than any of the other parts of this game. The statement will be then that because our homes are no longer viable for us, it would be okay for us to move east into the Salem forest, Salem woods, until our homes are habitable again. All right. The Nesbits have no problem with this. (laughs) I I wasn't expecting them to. The siren just quietly side eyes this whole situation of not entirely trusting of new packs and alliances forging. This is not an alliance. It is just a housing agreement. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sure, you can say that. Uh, Ethan, can you give me a, just a sense of the geographic area you're talking about them moving into? I would say probably the western section of what Jeff has marked here for the werewolves. So like in this okay so towards the area. got it thank you that's helpful there's only three of them bear in mind yep uh the werewolves uh let's see oh the werewolves oh wait this isn't a negotiation it's just yes or no right that's right hmm. the werewolves say yes Welcome to the pack. <laughs> uh, the Thawater just make detailed documentation of the fact that three non-werewolves have been welcomed into a werewolf pack. Mr. Chamberlain. Mr. Chamberlain uh, marks the doors of the witches' new houses with inscrutable runes in chalk one night. Okay. All right. So that's an agreement and they can do that. Is that how that works? Uh, Yeah, that seems to be how that played out. Okay. I mean, you can't not do it, right? Like, even if everybody says nothing, it still happens. That seems to be the way the rules yes. are. Yeah, I think that's pretty yeah. much it. Yep. But it, and, it and helps sorry, to did know I... whether people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Did yeah. you have a. Yeah. Did I, did I like step out of turn by picking my own faction? No, my just, own faction. Okay. I've been yeah. acting on my own faction all for that whole turn. Okay. It is allowed, but bear in mind that you have no actual ownership of it. Yeah. Right? So right. It's, right. it's equally yep. acceptable for someone else to pick the quote unquote your faction yeah. when it's their turn. Okay. Cool. No, I think that unfolded very well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If anyone wants to fix my map writing, that's totally a, fine. I'm not tied to it. I, I'm not an artist by any stretch. And I couldn't even draw this circle over here. So, yeah. <laughs> I hope someone's logging how, what all these symbols mean. I'm taking some notes. Okay. And we're recording it. Yeah. yeah. Up next is a me. Yep. My card is the Ten of Hearts. And the Ten of Hearts means how varied are the diets within the community? Which monster has the most unsettling or untenable diet? Or what materials are needed to upkeep and maintain the layers within the community? Are any of those materials difficult to get or hard to find? Um, I mean, we are talking vampires here. Yeah, I mean, I think I feel like I feel like I want to talk about feeding requirements. Yeah, I don't think that Kelly is um, going to pass up the phrase "unsettling or untenable diet." <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so. Yeah, so, I mean, obviously we got a bunch of vampires, including at least one significantly old vampire, it appears. So there's some substantial feeding requirements there. The werewolves, as we established, need to be hunting and, and eating spirits, at least. And, and you know, there are spirits inside of people, so that's one avenue for them. I think I want to talk about the siren, though. Mm. Mm-hmm. I knew you were going there. Neglecting her. Yeah. Uh, the siren... The siren needs um, needs to feed on the dreams or the memories, the, the, the longing of a person for home. And this creates certain, you know, difficulties because it ends up meaning that 
most of the people she feeds on need to be coming in from the outside, right? Because most of the time, like if someone's just touring the harbor and passes her island, but they're from Salem, that's not a problem. Like that, that they're they're not going to be longing in the same way. These be people who are coming in towards the harbor. Do do they lose their memories of that? Yes. Whoa. The that's whole sense of the whole sense of home when she when she feeds, they lose their sense of home, their sense of connection. The longing ceases, right? Is that why people stay here? Maybe. Hmm. Okay. Uh, and then an action. Yes. Yes. Um, my action is going to be start a project. And I'm going to say that the Nesbits commit the yeah, the Nesbits commission a um a sea voyage based on some information or evidence or hints they think they have about where this mysterious uh, city is. So the, the voyage is going to go find this land of golden pyramids. They think they finally have the answer oh. to. And it's not in the vicinity of Salem? It's abroad? Like they they found like the key piece of evidence, right? Okay. Like, you know step eight in the national treasure mm. chain and they're like ah it's here wherever here is and uh-huh. sent, or or it's it's we think that it's this particular thing right where it's not even location like a you know travel into the setting sun for th- this you know, like it's it's some arcane thing you have to do mm. right fyi this is literally the national treasure two chain <laughs> um and I'm going to say this is a long-term project, so it's going to take six turns. Hmm. Mm. Okay. Ooh. So they're scouring. Right. Like, if this is this is like a vast, like, generational project mm. that's going to be undertaken here. And how do we, uh, how does uh, contempt get resolved? Is it just we take it away when we feel that the, th- the situation is resolved? Yeah, you can you can make a case that you think contempt should be removed and, and essentially just do it, but it mm-hmm. also just may not get resolved. Like it's not, yeah. like it's not really mechanical exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, contempt will generally remain on the map for the rest of the game. Okay, it will act as a reminder of past contentions and slights, signs of discord within a diverse community. In addition, you can discard it back into the center of the table in two ways: by acting selfishly and by diffusing tensions. If a monster ever wants to act selfishly to the known detriment of the community, you can remove a contempt token to justify the behavior. And essentially you're saying there is contempt. Therefore I am doing this thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, You decide whether the behavior requires justification. This will often trigger others placing contempt tokens in response. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So a a question just came up because I'm thinking about what, Kelly said for this Nesbit thing, which is a unique problem for this game as opposed to the the dark the deep forest system. You said generational. Are we establishing which of these groups are immortal? I mean, we kind of know, but like some aren't. Um, is there markers for that? Or when we say the Cistern do X, we're talking about the faction, not necessarily the individuals. It's it's kind of up to the 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 group individual or faction the thing the monster Mm -hmm. right as it was created right like so for instance and i I think it's a little bit intuitive some of these answers are intuitive right mr chamberlain is a vampire he is immortal by default Mm -hmm. doesn't mean that he won't die in the course of play there there are things about like removing a monster from the board and that kind of stuff but the the baseline assumption is he's not going to die of natural causes Kind of on the opposite end of the spectrum, the Nesbits are just supposed to be mortal cultists. So right. while maybe one of them could be magically immortal for some reason or so there's something else weird going on there, the kind of the default assumption is they're they're gonna age out and they're intentionally like a community and that's how they sustain themselves, right? They're they're a cult, they grow over time. Mm-hmm. Old people die, new people come in. Uh something like the cistern might be sort of in the middle. Magi can extend their lives a number of different ways, so maybe they're not automatically going to age out, but also they're more like a, a coven is more like a faction. It's a group that could replenish its ranks. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of fundamentally why I'm asking, because I'm thinking about mm-hmm. the when I when I act for the or talking about the witches, I am sort of talking about 
the three original that stayed, but at some point they probably will fold over into apprentices and whatnot. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and, you know, keep some sense of that mm-hmm. again, uh, when this is this go round of like this season of turns mm-hmm. is going to be what? 91 years. Ooh. Okay. Right. Okay. So probably assuming conventional life expectancies, there's going to be some turnover in a mortal style, a faction with mortal lifespans. Yep. Okay. Uh, that ends my turn. Okay. So we are down to Brayden. All right. What is my card? Brayden, your card is the Three of Hearts. Whoa. And the Three of Hearts is someone discovers a trove of ritual items hidden from the humans. What are they? Add them to the map. Or an old language resurfaces among you, a tongue you have not heard for ages. Why was it silenced? Why has it returned? Hmm. Okay. Old language is definitely a thing for uh, for the Nesbits. I think just after the uh, just after the the expedition left for distant lands, like a week later, one of the Nesbits woke up with ancient Iremi text uh on his skin and uh an elder deciphered it it basically said no not that way <laughs> <laughs> so I love the nets bits so they're they're uh so some of their most intrepid uh adventurers and scholars have just gone off in completely the wrong direction and they don't really have a good mundane way of getting in touch with them so whenever they come back we'll 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 see if they come back with anything 40 years later yep uh why why was it silenced uh i mean i think this is this is a definite this is the first uh, supernatural. This is the first clearly supernatural thing that the Nesbits of Salem have witnessed. Mm-hmm. They have some dusty old tomes with these symbols in them, uh, some old stories and things. But this is proof that proof that maybe they didn't need that that their uh, their patron is watching out for them and their interests. So. Hopeful, but also uh, panicked a little bit. I think uh, they're yeah. That's 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 what's going on. Okay, very good. We take down to five, and uh, you get your action. Uh, let's say the the Sistren are eliciting help to close the gauntlet. This this is a uh, problem that must be resolved and we need everybody's help you is this the the issue around the gallows hill or something else uh, around gallows hill yeah uh this is an agree on something okay yep the werewolves are all in they are not happy with that weakening at all i'm gonna say that the siren opposes this because it has been a it has inspired people to get away from there, which has led more to being fed on by her. Hmm. It has driven more people towards her mm-hmm. to, get, mm-hmm. to get away from mm-hmm. there. And, yeah. And given them probably complicated feelings about home. Yeah. Right. Right. Yep. Interesting flavors. Um, <laughs> it's like chocolate. The, the thaumaturgists find that the tear in the gauntlet is useful to their own inscrutable ends and so uh greatly oppose the course of action pr- uh, brought forth by the sister i'm sorry uh, just for uh, clarification these are vampire thaumaturgists yes, yes. Okay. so okay so so far we've got the siren is opposed the thaumaturgists are opposed the sistren are doing it proposed it proposed it proposed the idea and the werewolves support it okay so the Nesbits um, and the and Mr. Chamberlain are who's left. I think Mr. Chamberlain is gonna write some more naughty things in chalk <laughs> on their doors. Is is abstention an option? <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, you can also at any point like choose to represent like specific individuals 
Right. Like we had that one weird werewolf and oh, yeah. a werewolf's partner. Um, you can be a dissenting thaumaturgist. Because it sounds like really it's just you're agreeing or you're saying nothing. Yeah. And you can, you know, decide the way in which you don't agree. Right. Yeah. I think you can you can frame the nothing as a as a negative. As, as a straight up no. Yeah. No, but in any event, remember, it doesn't actually change the outcome. Right. right. Mm, I'm going to say the the werewolf, um, the sort of um, umberly touched werewolf and um, the uh, Nesbitt that married um, are willing to help because the weekend gauntlet has made things a lot more difficult for the werewolf. Hmm. Should we give these two a name? Um. They are uh, Mr. and Mrs. Foxglove. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Is that everyone? Yep. I think so. Okay. That's uh, the end. That's a wheel, right? So we're back up to Vin and Braden. I know you have to leave shortly. Yeah, so... I think we probably want to cut it there and we'll yeah, call okay, this we've, we've round gone one. one chain. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. All right. Good Getting game, everybody. Yeah. 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 I think this is working really well. How are yeah, people no, feeling about it? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. I just, as long as someone's keeping notes. Yeah. 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 I, 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 yeah. I'll cut it over. That's it this week for the Chimera. Thanks again to Griffin Coldiron for recording this week's intro. You can find all of Griffin's podcast work through the Ghostlight Media Network or GLM Pods on Twitter. Our theme music is Hoof, Heart, and Hiss by Matt Weber. You can find a link to all of Matt's work in the show notes. I think that's everything, so we'll see you back here in two weeks. Thanks for listening. Oh my God. Hopefully nobody saw that.